In this video, I'm gonna share with you a simple yet effective technique to dodge and burn your photos. Of course, we have the dodge and burn tool inside Luminar Neo, but that is not my preferred method. For this one, we're gonna use layers. Let me show you how. Let's take a quick look at this example. If I jump into the edit stack here, you can see that there are no edits applied to this photo at the moment. And that's because all of the adjustments I've made to this photo have been done with layers only. But if I press the backslash key on the keyboard, we can actually see the original photo, a nice image for sure, but it's a bit flat if we compare it to this version. So here's our original, and here is the version with this dodge and burn approach which I created with layers. So we're gonna work on this photograph here. It's a royalty-free image provided to pexels.com by a photographer that goes by the name of Kate. So thank you very much, Kate. So the first thing we want to do is add the same photo again over the top as a new layer. So we do that by clicking that plus icon there and reloading the photo as a brand new layer. And over here on the right hand side, we have the opacity of the layer. And obviously as we change that, nothing changes because it's the same photo. However, from the drop down box here, we have the ability to change our blending mode. And as I mouse over the different options, you can see how the effect changes. And what I'd like to do is opt for multiply and as you can see, if I hide that layer, it's just darkened down all the pixels in the photo. But the brilliant thing is, of course, we have access to our mask, and that's gonna allow us to brush in this effect only where we want it. So just as a demonstration, I'll just click and put a squiggle over our body there, and you can see that we've darkened down those pixels. Wherever I paint gets darkened down. So I press Control Z on my keyboard three times to undo those brush strokes. And I'm gonna bring the strength of my brush down so that I can build the effect up. And I just begin to paint over our model the areas that I want to darken down. And to do this, I'm just thinking back to art class. So the arm is like a cylinder and I'm imagining a highlight where the light's hitting it and shadow where it's curving away from us. We can just give our viewers a little bit more of a helping hand and a visual cue by burning down, darkening down those shadows. And when I first start working with the brush, I like to work with a big broad brush and get in some nice heavy strokes nice and quickly and then I work a little bit more refined as you can see I've just switched to a smaller tighter brush for working on some of these details around the face every now and again it's a really good idea to check your progress come over turn the layer off and just see your original and make sure that you're happy now I'm just zooming back in to 100% so that I can really focus on the details. And now I'm just gonna go around the eyes, darkening the top of the eyes, and that's just gonna to help to accentuate and just bring out the eyes a little more. Also darkening down the eyebrows can also give a little bit more contrast to the face. Any of the features where you want your viewer to look, so the eyes and the lips, it's a really good idea to work that contrast. So now I'm just really accentuating the darker part of the lips there before revisiting the cheeks and just really trying to chisel out those cheekbones. And one really nice aspect of working in this way is if you do over bake it and you're a little too aggressive with your burning technique, you can always just come into the opacity slider of the layer and just bring that puppy right down. So I'm gonna say that is our burn component complete. Now let's work on the highlight layer, the dodge part. So we're just gonna add that layer once again. Nothing complex here whatsoever. Now we just need to select the correct blend mode. So previously we used multiply. The opposite of the multiply effect is the screen option. And that's gonna brighten everything up. Let me push the opacity to 100 so we can see that more clearly. And now I'm gonna hide that layer. This is our before. Right click and show the layer. This is our after. Currently that is a very bright and intense effect. What I would recommend you do is just grab the opacity slider and look around the photo and decide what is the brightest that I want this to be. And if we say, you know, the brightest part I only want to be about where it is at the moment, we'll set that opacity slider to that amount. And now we know that if we reveal 100% of this effect anywhere on this photo, the brightness that we reveal is limited to that amount. So I'm just gonna press Control Z to reset that. Again, I'm gonna have my strength somewhere around 20% is fine. And as soon as I click once and start painting, we're gonna hide that layer. And now anywhere that I paint with my brush, we're gonna start revealing 20% of that effect. So just as we darken down underneath the cheekbones, we can now brighten up the top of the cheekbones. If we wanted to make more of this reflection in the glasses, we could go over them. Now I've dived straight into the details, but what I'd recommend you actually do is not do that. The best way to work is work more broadly to start with. He says as he continues working on the details. 
I'm actually going to drop the strength even lower for this so I can be more subtle with how I build this up. I'll accentuate the shading on the clavicle area. We can put a highlight line down both arms just to help give a little bit more three dimensional form. We can use this effect to brighten her hair. And again, by hiding and showing the layer, we can check that we're heading in the right direction. One of my favorite things is to come and work on the details. So let's zoom right in again. Let's go to 100%. I'm gonna change my brush size nice and small so we can get in and just really start to pick out those details. Um, I'm gonna brighten up the lips, just add a little bit of glossiness, bring a little bit of a pop to the chin. And this area underneath the nose, attaching to the lips, where it undulates back and forth. It's a really nice idea just to pick out those highlights. So the bridge of the nose, the sides of the eyes. So when you're working on the whites of the eyes, it's a really good idea that you don't just go with a uniform amount smashing over the top of the whites of the eyes. What you wanna do is think of them like the sphere that they are and just brighten up the area, either side of the iris, just a little bit more than the edges and that will help to give that nice rounded form as you can see there. And talking of rounded form, you can see that we're getting a little catch light uh, underneath the chin here. And I'm just bringing out a little bit more of that definition by brightening up that pre-existing bright line. And as you can see, it just helps to give a bit more pop, a bit more three-dimensional form. As it does when we go over the hair, I'm just bringing out those little highlight pops in the hair. You don't need to go as detailed as this. And I would also recommend when you do do it, take a little bit more time. I'm being a bit rushed just for the sake of this tutorial. This is something if you wanna get a good result, it benefits from taking your time. However, hopefully you can see that by brightening up the areas you want to accentuate, dodging them in, we can really help to sculpt the form and it just gives our photo a little bit more impact and definition. Okay, let's close that layer property down. And let's just have a look at our before and our after. Now before and after with that dodge and burn effect applied, let's jump back to the original by hiding these layers and you can see how this gets built up. So this is our underlying photo without either of those effects and this time I'm going to reveal the highlight layer first, known as our dodge layer. So this is without the dodge layer and this is with it. And now let's do the same for the burn layer. Let's introduce the burn layer. So that is both the dodge and burn layer added before and after. So as you can see, the actual technique itself is actually very straightforward. We're adding the photo back over itself as a new layer, once as a multiply layer for darkening things down, once as a screen layer for brightening things up. The difficulty is what we then have to do where we paint the mask to define which areas we want brighter and which areas we want darker but I assure you with practice, you will get the hang of it. The key is just to think about where the light is defining the three dimensional form and accentuating that. So brightening the top of the cheekbones, darkening underneath, chiseling out that form, that's the key. Now, while the dodge and burn technique is fantastically useful for portraits, it is not exclusive to portraits. And if you'd like to see how I applied this same technique to a landscape photo, along with a full edit as well, I'll put that video together for you there. It's all about editing a waterfall. I think you'll enjoy that one. And if you missed it, maybe you haven't subscribed yet. You can subscribe by clicking the AT button right there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.